You know, I'm dying, but but by God, do I have good morals? Hell yeah. All right. Wait, don't I not have a map? Why is it giving me a map sometimes? That's weird. That's fine. Actually, what was my tasks right now? Sing karaoke, track down your gun. God damn, dude. Who made the call reporting the cr the crime? Put the clothes in the trash. Track down your badge. Find smokes and smoke them. <laughs> Pay for damage. All right, yeah. Right, I, that's right. I couldn't give the kid my jacket. Which means... I want to put the jacket on. That just looks horrible. Now you need to owe them a ball or at least a similar looking metal sphere. Okay, I, th I think... Wow, I look like a, such a hobo. With my um, crowbar and bag. A lonely cormorant surveys the sea, indifferent to your approach. What the hell is a cormorant? It's like a bird? There's a girl up there. Did she spill the paint? Hey, you! The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. I think she did spill the paint. Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta go with that. I gotta go with that idea. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Hep C. Let's start with your blood type and go from there. Go where? Accosting a minor? She's a minor? Listen to your partner, oh, pig yeah, man. I guess so. Your grubby hooves off little old ladies. Little old late. That's a contradiction. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Wait, I just asked her. I saw she was looking over. Hatred, disgust, it's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her steering. That a zon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. A zon? Probably the wild pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Wacky. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Oh no. I have to actually be a cop? I have to actually be a cop for once? What are you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aerial graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs around here though. Just union cats. I'm a name's not Mona, so... <laughs> Stupid. She wants it to be something true and total. I have an opinion on this. Want to hear it? Yeah. Oh, she does? <laughs> Actually, I don't have an opinion. I lie. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. You've lessened her desire to deface the building. 
Let's fucking go. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Nice. She doesn't want it nice. I was cool. Therefore, she will not deface the building. And now I have to be a goddamn cop with my bag of bottles and crowbar. Your room in the whirling isn't much bigger than this sloop. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Joyce Messier? Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. Hmm. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Holds her hand over the railing. Shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. Grip is tight and cold. Well, she looks cold. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the Oh, RCM right, the dead body. Matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. Ah, it's In a the medical meanwhile, episode. You have my full cooperation and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. Thanks, suggestion. You seem rich. Can I have some money? <laughs> Holy shit. Damn, hobo cop's not done yet. Hmm. You're on a boat. Why, yes, I am. Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. Oh. The word it feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. Thanks, Inland Empire. A breeze ripples through the cells and tugs at your hair. Below, the sleek, fish-like shape of the hull parts the water. Beneath that, a resounding darkness. You're reminded of something, or some one. Okay. Your boat really does need a name, though. Okay. How about Cordelachy 19? Why? Oh. Because it was manufactured in Revishal East by a company called Cordelachy, and its hull is 19 paces long. How about Dolores? Why Dolores? I don't know. It feels pretty. Hmm. Well, it means nothing to me. I think I'll stick with the factory name. But thank you for the suggestion. Bitch. My slew? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. Well, there you go. There's your name, eel's hips. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. You, uh, Kim, you, I'm building rapport. I'm building rapport, okay? I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Do you have a license for this boat? Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. That's not answering my question. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Porcelain? Qualified pleasure craft operator. So charming. Where's the damn license? Yeah, right? May I see your license? I just renewed its safety inspection last month, officers. It is completely seaworthy. In fact, it's taken part in not one, but two insulindic regattas. Even finished once. Still need a license, ma'am. Actually, you don't. <laughs> Krim! I'm pretty sure I do. I police. The Wayfarer Act specifically denies the RCM the authority to demand anyone's operator license. It's a little known fact among us law officials. 
See, I was hoping she wouldn't have a license, and therefore I could use that as leverage to interview her later. And be like, well, that's a shame about the no license, ma'am, but... Well, shit! It's a... Though, I'm assuming this is the, uh... This is them basically saying, hey, you know how you, you... The, the... The regular civilian doesn't have to give you a license if a cop asks kind of thing. Wait, how exactly little known is this fact? I was just being polite. Yeah. Even school children know the Wayfarer Act. Yeah, yeah, okay, thought so, yeah, no. Mm, yeah. So we can't pull over random civilians and demand their papers? That's weak. No need to resort to self-pity, detective. No. We can still ask for her passport. Okay, you thanks. You need to save face if you want her respect. Demand that passport. Uh, passport. Of course. Look at her passport. The woman is silent, smiling while the waves lap against the hull. In your hand, under the plastic, a light blue passport saying, Republic of Vespa. The coat of arms has a lion and an ostrich. Segent. The woman, born in the year three in the commune of Rivershaw, smiles at you. Face adorned with frown lines and crow's feet. The <laughs> photo is recent. The name reads, Rejoice Leighton Messier. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Rejoice, her name is Joyce, yeah. You're from Vesper. My husband is. I have dual citizenship. A Vespertine is handier when traveling. Oh, okay. She nods and returns the plastic bag to her coat. Good. <sighs> what can you tell me about the strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Mm hmm. What's your role in it? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. Oh. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay oh. the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. So, Wild Pines is the big company, the main the main company that the workers work for, I believe, and so she she negotiates deals with the with the union and and the higher ups for the most part. Would that not mean that she she's on a fancy boat? Does that not mean she has to pick a side, kind of though? Isn't she kind of in the best interests of Wild Pines, though? And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. I can't believe I still haven't taken the body down. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Oh yeah, Measurehead. Yes. Jean-Luc Measurehead. She leans back and rolls her eyes. Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. No, oh, don't flatter me. But the strike began in December. Right. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Okay. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more... I guess you could say, aggressive. <laughs> they had two significant concessions, including being paid for overtime and medical. Yikes. Yikes. Okay, um, I, yeah, what are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere and banners. What did they say again? Oh, yes. Every worker, a member of the board. 
of the Union Board. Every single worker? I, you know, I'm not gonna lie. That, maybe I'm too capitalist or something, but that, that even sounds like a little much. I mean, I guess every worker having a vote is, is one thing. You like that. But... If you, every single worker is a member of the board, how will they ever get anything done? You'll be in deadlock for, like, ever. I don't know what to think about that. I, I, don't, I don't know. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Yeah, okay, uh, I, you, you know, I'm not gonna lie, uh, I, you know, those first two things that the union was talking about, pretty good, medical, love it, um, that, that's all pretty good, I won't lie, that right there, uh, will, will not work, <laughs> nothings will get done, <laughs> fucking nothing will get done. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. Holy. All right, Union, gotta be honest right now, guys. You're losing me a little bit. I think we might need to find a little middle ground. They're having a blast. But how can they afford it? After four months, my assumption was they would prefer a more practical solution. Four months? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up. Just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. Huh, you would normally think there'd be some negotiation. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Well, one person got lynched. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. Oh, yeah, I spoke to them. The, he's like the chill guy. This checks out. Yeah. The reply comes quick. What happened to that other guy? Mr. Claire told him to... How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. <laughs> Go on to his shorter stature, you see. <laughs> cool. Yes. Extremely. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Claire has worked with before. And who was more than fair with him and the union. I mean, yeah, they did get two things. Sounds like usual aggressive posturing. So the union is getting very, very demanding and rude. Or at least the union boss is. I mean, normally I'm all for the union, but I, I won't lie, they, they they seem to be a bit aggressive. I want to hear more about the union boss. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Well, I believe him on that. Of course not. Oh. Everard is fantastically corrupt. Oh. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Oh. He can't be that bad. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen. Oh. And I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. 
There's it's there's nepotism in the fucking union? It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see. With a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. Well, the union itself. The Debardeurs Union was once a perfectly normal institution. 20 years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The brothers Claire came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The Debardeurs mm. are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. So a crime syndicate helps run the fucking union then. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask? I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. <laughs> Would you say the Debardeurs union is... I don't like any of these answers. Uh, let's go with socialist mob, fuck it. Thank you for being candid. Sadly, Wild Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades. However much you feed the wolf, the wolf always hungers. You know, I gotta be honest. Uh, I It takes a little bit of, uh, of self reflection to have a uh, generally leftist game criticize themselves to this degree it's 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 kind of it's kind of interesting um seeing this whole like world i i got it's it's kind of cool i was like hey yeah like you might be for this one side or this other side, but the people on that side can still be fucking assholes and problem people. That's pretty cool. That's a rarity. It's hard to find that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Scabs at the gate. Did you put them there? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the union refuses to? If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not right now, at least. One more thing. Is this something happened in the elections? Did someone get shot? I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the union. She disappeared. Hmm. Disappeared? Hmm. Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Hmm, that's eerie. Does it? Oh shit, no, the wrong one! suspects foul play. But there's nothing they could do. It was a union matter. Crap. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Hmm. Crap, I meant to do eerie. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. Of course. How else can I help? I'd like to learn about the Wild Pines a bit more. What we do. I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. What do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration. Offshore platforms. And there's money as well, Pine have. I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. Oh, a billion? <laughs> Encyclopedia failure. Oh shit. The money I owe is so much less than that. Yes, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary. 
but they are quite real for the 72,000 employees who depend on wild pines for their paychecks. A conglomerate the size of wild pines is like a shark. If it stops moving and growing, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It is a tremendous responsibility. Uh, I mean, I, I, I get what she's trying to say, but that does sound like a little bit of a, a little bit of like giant company posturing to make themselves be like, no, no, it's not for me. How else are we going to keep the lights on for our people? 40 million year old Brandy. Uh, barely of age hooker. Fly jet. Smoke doobie. Yeah! Like, I don't, I don't know how I, how I feel about that. They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the suzerain. <laughs> I like their funny words, magic woman. No, the fuck she just said. Centuries of care, deliberation and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. Ah, all right. She nods. Okay. I want to know about the lynching. Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. My badge. My badge. My badge. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. Oh, we got good on empathy. Part told you I recently suffered from an unusual medical episode. My lost badge related to it. I see. So it's increasingly so worried. Are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I really should not tell her drinking. That is, that sounds like a terrible decision. Uh, I'm just gonna go with, um, yes. I can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. Oh, God damn it. I'll go with number two. Oh, dear. I suppose this does explain some of the more curious turns in our conversation. I don't think drinking was the right call, so I, I think I think the eating it one is fine. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. But I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Who? Who? Suggestion. High chance of success. She's a negotiator. Let's go! Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. Surely there is some other ways to demonstrate our enforcement law enforcement credentials. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. It better not be my gun. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The union controls the terminal. So it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. Thank you, Reaction Speed. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or you can recover your badge. Though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Thanks, Joyce. Detective, a word in private before we continue. 
Hobocop. Let's go! Hobocop! <laughs> what timing! Technically, you wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures. But who knows where the hobo part takes you? To the bar? The old Lassemois? To the pier or the sewers? To Le Royaume, where for 300 years they interred the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long forgotten triple malt bourbon. Then fight the Aram Khan beast that lurks the bottommost sepulchres. The secrets of the city are all yours at last. Okay. Bonuses from the thought reveals extra special collector's edition tare bottles on the map. More money from selling them. Lear learning cap for shivers raised to six. <laughs> All right. All right. Why not? This is not going quite as I hoped it would, Detective. How did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. <laughs> I thought it was going well. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't have- I don't know what to do about it. He doesn't let it show, but there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. I am sorry for putting us in this situation. I'll handle it. It would not hurt if you tried more in the future, yes. I'm sorry, Kim. Man, letting Kim down is like the worst feeling in the game. It just- it just feels fucking terrible. You could just, you know, file my badge. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. Yeah, but now I'm Hobocop? Which means I can search things easier. You could request a new one from the station, but that would literally take months. Would you propose that we don't investigate the drug trafficking? No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Of course, detective. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go with the... I'm gonna go with the hopefully, um, ba find a badge part. I don't think it's a great idea, but I'd like to find my badge. A sturdy metal door guards the door rattles again. Stop banging on the door, Captain Mouse. <laughs> no, go check. Backyard door. Then. <laughs> Bangs on door anyway for the old lady. Okay. Where could- I don't know where the badge could possibly be. Well, it's not in the dumpster, unfortunately. Balcony with a view to the yard. Garn hose won't be used to the snow. Hey, what's that noise down there? It's me, dingus. There must be another way into the building. Oh my god. You are so loud, Kim. You see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. He says in a quiet voice, despite the cold, his shirt hangs unbuttoned on his frame. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. <laughs> I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. It's the god of cigarettes and youth. Ask him if he's got anything to spare. <laughs> don't let him go. 
This could be your witness. <laughs> the balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? Yes. Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. Mm. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. I want to. I want to know the backyard. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? Uh, when I get more pneumonia. We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Pretty sure I didn't. No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Muscular? Last week? I don't know. Look. He looks around the courtyard again. Snow blankets, the old patio chairs and dead house plants and all the neighboring windows are black. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing? Last Sunday. I had a friend over. What kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. Are you having sex? A Sunday friend. How intriguing. Sex! Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby and drinking beer. He doesn't reply. Gesturing. No. With his cigarette, under the gray sky, snow continues to pile on the neighboring window sills. Someone hides behind a curtain. Those windows have eyes, and those eyes are watching, spying on you three. That's disconcerting. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. I don't believe you. Martin Martinez? Good local name. Let's go with that. No. We won't. Takes one last drag of a cigarette before stubbing it out on the snowy balcony with a dying hiss. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Convince him to stay. 72%. I've got great people-pleasing uh, skills. Time to bring out your- Fuck! Tears and beg him. Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a dog. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't to... Please don't go. I'll stop jerking. I'll take out the trash. Just please don't leave me. Trash? <laughs> Fuck. Please don't go. I'll even stop smoking inside. Listen, I really have to go. Ah, there it goes. Wasted. You would have gotten at least a few good drags out of it. Man, electrochemistry, stop it. Good luck with the investigation. Electrochemistry, you, please. Do you mind? So long, Gay Bowser. He's gone. We should run after him. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. There has to be a way of mm. getting inside the building. Let's go check out the door near the pier again. Once we found a way in, we can ask around for his apartment. Door by the pier? They said we have to go through a back door, though. To the east. I assume this was the back door. Could be up there, maybe, but... Hmm. We have a pry bar. Maybe we can open up that thing over there with the, uh, with the pry bar. Hmm. Oh, that, au that audio is having a problem. That audio is struggling. Ooh, the trash can. Wait, I'm Hobo Cop. That means I'm so good at trash. Ooh. 
Let's go. We sure do love ourselves a good hobo cop. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. Good mail delivery box. The mail collection box has no faith in your psychopathic manipulations. <laughs> well, good on good on the mailbox. It knows better. Perhaps maybe we can talk to people here. An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Maybe main hall built. No, wait. Entrance to building B? East Delta? I'm building like West though, wouldn't I? An off key melody starts playing after you ring the main hall bell. building A. Then a woman picks up the receiver. But the doorbell is broken, and the bookstore shouldn't even be on the list anymore. So I can't help you. Please don't call here again. Thanks. A single beep indicates that the line has gone dead. Wait, muscular type? There's a boxing for young athletes in gym. M maybe? All you hear is static. No! no one answers the call. How about the other building? How about um, East Delta Pinball? Silence. No one answers your call. I don't know if randomly calling the mailbox is actually going to end up doing anything good for me. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. What's this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. This is a white check. You may retry it. Well, might as well retry it then later on. Because there's a oh! secret door hidden behind the panels of eat tonight. That's why they're too orderly. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Kim! Kim is made of steel. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. <laughs> made of steel. Oh. Well, this is creepy. <laughs> to a Magnesola magnesium supplement. Yellow bone yellow Be protein. Still my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. <laughs> Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However, see that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? A secret path the local kids use. Okay. Listen, Kim. I, I know... I don't have a pay grade. Money. Get out of my way or get fucked up. Cured pig's head. It looks mummified. That's weird. Oh, jacket. Well, click on that jacket took me here, which is, uh, not what I expected, but all right. The doorway is going to collapse soon. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. Oh, hello. Oh, it's a postcard. Money!
God, I'm so poor. Can I climb up? Can I climb up that way? Oh, I can. Yes. No, 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 no. Look on that. There we go. I am healed. Wait, am I about to sneak out of, uh... Am I about to sneak out of the area? Oh, I guess not. Only the flapping cloak. Some of this cloak behind. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. He judges the drop. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Kim, don't, don't. Oh, my boy, my badge might be in it. <gasps> my badge, my gun. <gasps> Look around. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. The look in his eyes is a mix of the engineer-like interest and the wonder of a six-year-old seeing a horse for the first time. Motherfucker. Ah, that's a huge crane. Yes, that's one way of putting it. It's certainly an impressive achievement of engineering. But I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. Do you really think I should? The cloak is mine. Should I go for it? Jump? The cloak? I do think it's yours. Yes. As to whether you should go for it, well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops. Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. What are we doing? We're awfully close to breaking into the industrial harbor. They are bound to have information for us. I thought it was our intention. Or it could be that we are just exploring. He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. Two meters isn't that far. Nope, no, that's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast, you're a boxer, and you've climbed way too high up there. Sure, just be careful, okay? Looks like you almost strained a muscle there. I think I did strain a muscle. <sighs> oh boy. Okay. Well, it's pretty much exactly what I thought would happen happens. Um Now I've got lots of questions involving what's the best uh, course of action. Like, do I? What are things that? So, what was the skill I needed? So Sovereign something? Savior fair? Sneak under their noses? Done with immense pen? No. Oh. I thought like reaction speed or hand-eye coordination would be the better one, but all right. There, he still is, looking 
right through you. Oh, I compressed my shit. The body can... below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. I forgot that I compressed my shit. Let's go. It does now. Ha ha ha. Again, the corpse laughs at you, pus dripping from its mouth. You will never be able to hold it in. It's always too much. Every time it happens, it gets worse and worse. There's nothing more to throw up now. All that's left is crying and convulsing dryly at the same time. Just cry. Little black bubbles pop on the corpse's lips. Decay liquid, like tar. It's like he's gurgling. Officer, you just need to be stronger. Learn to keep it in long enough for us to work. There's nothing else to do. You can open this white check again by going to your character sheet and spending a skill point to upgrade your endurance. Gain new skill points by exploring and completing side tasks. Relax. It's okay if you don't make it today. The bloated corpse isn't going anywhere. Are you shitting me? Are you sh oh my god, are you shitting me? I even compressed my shit! I even comp I compressed it! It's raining again. It was clear just an hour ago. Thanks, gardener lady. God damn it. All right. Spokar's picks an ill-advised residential area overlooking the Jamrock Quarter. Thirteen-story buildings line the hillside like sarcophagi on Amis Fod. Looks from behind their last boom years. 39 the project fails catastrophically, leaving behind an opiate, opiate and hepatitis B infested slum. Good God. I'm gonna go back to the shop real quick. The tear machine stands. Your bottles clunk into the machine. You're 100% sure you've got special hobo cop money for that tear. At least 100% extra tear money. If the numbers on the machine told you otherwise, it's a lie. God damn it. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to. What's that magazine she's reading? Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, oh, but... Oh, you know what? I guess I'll ask about the dead body. Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Uh-huh. I'm not even gonna bother. I'm not even gonna fucking bother. This- this bitch knows nothing. To the left of some crystal. Wait. A small cabinet ah, here it is. is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. I, mean, I don't really need any of these. What's the thing on the top? Are these just cigarettes and stuff? A colorful display of Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Plus one physique, minus one morale. Plus one physique, minus one morale. And then, of course, cigarettes. Under the... No. I kind of want to smoke the cigarette just so I can get that task off my task bar. But I also don't want to smoke the cigarette. Uh, maybe we'll try going down. Maybe, like, southwest? A sewer grate, a gateway to the river of filth. Helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Ah, so there's a drawbridge out here. 
Hot air rises from the sewer, sour, acidic, and strangely comforting. Uh, that is strange, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. I am literally a hobo. I have a plastic bag picking up bottles. Good God. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. Takes a pair of sunglasses and, and sticks them under your nose. Try the shades Abort. on. These are hideous. Perfect, Once they match more, my tie. They don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer. You look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and 50 cents. They're perfect for concealing your bloodshot and baggy eyes. Oh, God. No, you are definitely not buying those. <laughs> Don't tell what to do, Kim. I like those sunglasses. Are you sure? But they look so good on you. You should think this through, officer. This is a very accurate representation of a street vendor. I'm not going to lie. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Sirais plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Oh, God. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, superb material, very cool. UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. <laughs> this is excellent. What's over here? There are clothes inside. Cheap second-hand clothes. Smelling of strangers' body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics. Best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments. Made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. God, this is this is like so accurate. I'm actually really impressed with 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 this. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. 58%? We could do this. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Oh. Surf, it says. But also wind. Summer. 100% waterproof. And sport all in different typefaces this jacket is the apex of human evolution <laughs> the moment at which man became weatherproof <laughs> thanks practical and yet it may deaden your senses to the world around you possibly because of the awful typeface good choice officer mega sporty and it's only 450 for you sir yeah i want the windbreaker Gotta prepare for springtime, right? What's right here? Food? You see two lowly, defeated speakers. Oh, speakers. Thrones. Slaves, basically. What? Perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land. A pair of found, durable wear sneakers. Ultra serious. Oh! I can see you've a taste for luxury, officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? A pair of found ultras. The design I got my J's, chat. Simple. A futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway, a jet black upper, and a silver lined midsole. Those sneakers, mister. Ah! Those sneakers are the latest found sneakers. Super air, super fine, super cool. Only 50 real. Good lord. These once respectable speakers have been conquered, reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable found ultras no no don't look at the speakers officer look at the sneakers the sneakers are the stars here <laughs> I'm a... no don't pity them officer these are old samaran garbage don't even look at them check out these super cool fun ultras instead can't i just buy the sad conquered samaran speakers no way officer these aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Lo-fi socialist junk. That's why I want- I think I might be lo-fi socialist junk myself. No, officer. You're a high-class policeman who accepts nothing less than the best. Lucky for you, 
I've got the best on sale. I want the speakers. Well, if you want them, but see, they are the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, where will the sneakers It's go? raining, dummy. I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers on the ground. It's raining. If, on the other hand, you wanted to buy the sneakers too, I could maybe throw in the speakers for a little extra. 50 cents? But I really want this. I really want you this. You see a Severus street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer. Everything's cool here. Everything's cool. The goods are cool. The customers are cool. The place is cool. And one more thing, officer. From out on the bay, a cool wind gathers. A cool wind? into the city, tugging at the textiles hanging around the stand. Some distance away, the sound of a tin can clattering across the street can be heard. You're very cool. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> really? <laughs> you think I'm cool? Oh, yes. You got style. You got personal style. You know what you like. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. Don't be distracted by the flattery and funny man act. Questions. Uh, where are you from? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachon. Very cool. I. All right, whatever.